sincerity and the truth yeah we're just um you know doing a lesson of course going into these guys um that go by the name sakari you know and, and it goes for uh, all these other camps that's not keeping the uh Pasat correctly man you know this is a prime example jake turns a holy convocation they'll turn something that's to be uh very very solemn in you know it's already written to do it a certain way you know and they just adding all kind of extra shit, man. You know? The, the the Passover is not a day to actually, you know, use as a as a effing concert, man. You know? Mm -hmm. If you want to go to a concert, you could have did that on any other day. The scriptures don't say to, to, to have a podium and, and, and play wild Jamaican music. Because first off, if you really want to go or, or just wild music on a whole, because first off, if you want to go to... The times of Exodus, which we finna going through right now, that was a that was a time where the Lord was bringing judgment, man. Exactly. You know, they didn't have time to be sitting and listening and, and, and parading and doing all that stuff. You know, that was a time the scriptures speak about eating with haste. The scriptures speak about having your loins girded. It speaks about having um, your shoes on, man. Pretty much being in that mindset of just eating and getting the getting the hell out of Egypt. You know, that was the premise of the Passat, where the Lord was going to pass over. Everything else is fluff, which we're going to go into that because you guys got a lot of gimmicks, man, to keep you, keep the uh, masses of those those, those um, jakes around y'all asleep. You want to mm. say something? Yeah, I was going to say, um, yeah, that, you know, you, you, you was talking about how it was a Solomon assembly and uh, um, how, you know, this was a heavy time because the Lord was passing over. Jake, because there was heavy judgment that was about to go out. The Lord said that he was going to kill the firstborn of everything in Egypt, except those who had the blood of the uh, lamb on their doorpost. So, so, so were they sitting back there partying? I mean, you got to think about that. If, 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 mm -hmm. if you seen Moses do all these miracles, right? Moses did all these miracles, the Red Sea turned into blood. He, he smitten the ground and, and, and the dust turned into lice. You know what I'm saying? He, he Frogs was hopping out of everything. Three days of just complete darkness. You know? So if, if he did all that and he's showing the children of Israel all that and then he comes say, hey, y'all go put blood on y'all blood uh, on, on y'all doorposts because the Lord about to smite the firstborn and, and if y'all don't do that, the destroyer gonna come in y'all house and kill y'all children. You think they were sitting in their houses partying? Mm -hmm. Or were they sitting in their house praying to the Lord that the, that the death angel passes over their house. Because even, even even though the Lord told them to have blood on their blood post, they was probably still afraid that the death angel may come into their house. Mm -hmm. You know? Nobody had no time to be sitting back there partying. And we're supposed to be rehearsing the righteous acts. This is not righteous. But anyway, I grab uh, um, that Leviticus unless you want me to get, get something else. Go ahead. All right, so this is Leviticus 12. I'm going to start at the top. And it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak to the children of Israel. Uh, no, that's not it. This is, uh, no, I'm sorry, Exodus. It's like Exodus 12. This is Exodus 12, and it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So this is the very first day of the year. It's the beginning of the months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth month, in the, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to his house 
of, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the house be too little for, for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him, uh, next onto, onto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. All right. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. The lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, this is something that we can't do this part of it because we're not in our land. We don't have access to livestock. We don't have access to all y'all out there that want to say, see, we, we, we can't do all that. We can't do all that. Yeah, but there's parts of this that we can do. And the parts that we can do are the parts that we're supposed to do. We're not, we're not in our own land. We're in captivity, okay? We don't have access to livestock and sheep and all that stuff like they did back in the ancient world to keep the Passover, okay? For y'all fools out there that may say that, all right? Verse 7, it says, And ye shall take the blood uh, blood, and, and, and spike it onto the side post of the upper door of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night and roast it with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs shall you eat it. Now, is this not a direction? Is this not the Lord giving you direction on how you're supposed to behave during the Passover? Yeah. And the bitterness represents the captivity because we're in the house of suffering, man. We're not mm -hmm. in the house of feasting. You know, and you, you, you got to, when you're going into the Passover, it's pretty much a sentiment of, of everything is symbolic. So we have to do everything correctly. You know, the lamb represents Yahweh Shai. That was, and, and even fast forward towards the times of Yahweh Shai, he got killed around the Passover, man. Mm -hmm. You know, was the, was, did the Lord throw a concert before his death? You know, you know now they, they, they gave praises. You know, they spoke one to another, you know, and things of that nature. But they wasn't, they wasn't on stage with big boy microphones, man, blasting away. You know, jumping from one side to the next, whooping and hollering. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's a very, very serious time. That's why when you recollect on your outside, you don't even be in the spirit to, you know what I'm saying, do all that jamming away, man. But see, the masses of these people in the, in, 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 uh, you guys' congregation, y'all are heavily asleep. Y'all don't see uh, the bewitching, all right? Because, see, they'll turn the truth, like, truth of the most high into a lie, and they'll use the pa Passover as a, uh, as a front. But they're actually, uh, you know, casting casting uh, witchcraft upon the minds of the people with that mm -hmm. bullshit, man. Because it's taking away. The scriptures speak about if you add to the world, word is going to add plagues. And if you're taking away, the Lord is going to take you out of the book of life, man. And you guys are taking away and you're also adding to things that ought not to be so. Mm -hmm. You know, we take the Passover serious. If we took the Passover. I know these brothers had their Passover. All brothers and great millstone with the apostles model the Passover even going back to the old school you know it, it's, a, it's a solemn time brother brother kiki and hi hi brother how was it day you know now you talk like I say have small talk men will do that even in the ancient world but overall the the overall uh, capacity of the Passover is to be is to, to go through these these Bible verses man go through everything in its uh, entirety and, and recollect upon that and do it to the best of your ability and get the you know head to your to your quarters just like an angel world. That's right. right. All right, I'm gonna continue on. And it says um verse verse nine it says uh eat not of it raw nor sodden don't eat it raw don't boil it nor sodden at all with water but roast it with fire eat his head his legs and the pertinence thereof eat it all and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth until the morning you shall burn. So burn with fire. So if you had anything left over, you would take the rest of it and just burn it into ash. Okay, if y'all got too full, well, y'all can eat it all. And it says, and thus you shall eat it. With, now listen to this. Listen to this very carefully, because this is a key instruction right here. Thus you shall eat it with your loins girded, and your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. 
Now, why did the Lord tell us to eat it with the Lord, with our loins girded and our shoes and our feet and our staff and our hands? It sounds like you're about to go somewhere. You on the move, man. You about to you you about to the Lord is telling you, hey, hey, you may have to move, man, so be ready to go. Mm -hmm. All right? And like now, the scriptures speak about being pilgrims on earth, man. You know, we stay in the mentality of not trying to do the most here in Babylon. You know? Now brothers have lives and brothers have jobs and, and you know certain careers or for lack of a better term. That's of course the American standard. But jobs and things of that nature. Um, but we already know at the end of the day, the Lord can relocate us, man. Relocate us out of the city, relocate us out of the state. And if it's the Lord's will, we'll just do so, you know. Because just like during the time of Passover, they had to be on a move, man. So the scriptures speak about being pilgrims on the earth, man. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, the scripture says we have no continuous city, but we seek one to, to come. Now, these guys, they'll say, all right. Well, if you go back to the time of Josiah, he had a miraculous Passover. First off, during the time of Josiah, they was in uh, Israel, man. And still, given that type of celebratory event, like if you compare the, the Passover in Egypt, all right, to the Passover in Israel. The one in Israel, during the time of Josiah, which all, all Israelites didn't necessarily keep the Passover that immaculate, that was a very immaculate Passover pursuing the uh, which is in the first, that's just the first chapter. But the thing is, first and foremost, that was in the Holy Land, you know, that was a, that was the king of Israel. This is, we're in the land of our captivity. We're behind enemy lines. Mm -hmm. You have to move just like the Passover in Egypt. Now, in the kingdom of heaven, are we going to have a Mac in the Passover? We don't know. That goes without being said. You know, uh, I don't know. You know, maybe apostles will go into it. You know, brothers are going to it. It might be as, as, as serious, like, during the time of Yahweh Shah, you know, or could be. But all that concert stuff, of course, we ain't, we ain't with that, the spirit ain't with that anyways, mm -hmm. you know. And like I said, we're behind enemy lines, man. You got to be on this thing just like during the time. We ain't new Egypt. You got to do, you got to keep the Passover like how it was in the, uh, old Egypt, man. Because it's not like we're, it's not like we free. Nigga, you going to go work every damn day. You don't own any land. You ain't got multiple wives. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no castle, no crown on your head. You know? You're not sovereign. You can't do what the hell you want to do in this land. You know? So we're not in our we're not in a place to where we can call ourselves free. The condition, this condition that you're seeing right, right here. Uh let's see, is it this one? No, it's not that one. No, it's a lot here. This condition, right? This condition that you're seeing. Where, where you have Jake dancing on stage. This is a Babylonian custom. Okay? This is modeled after what y'all see on BET, on, 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 uh, uh, on the Grammys, these videos. You got a light strobing up here at the top with this mist smoke coming down. Somebody with a microphone, loud music playing. People, you sitting on top of a stage. There's people in the background chanting and and, and 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 cheering you on. That's Babylon. You might as well be having a goddamn concert because that's exactly what it is. You know, that's a Babylonian custom. And then and then furthermore, in Babylon, when when they do these type of performances, that's like a ritual. It is. You see, so y'all are. That's why the scriptures talk about. Uh, you are as your father, the devil. You see, because you're doing the same. You're, what you're doing is you're mixing. You're trying to mix what the scriptures say in with the customs of Babylon, and that shit don't work. Don't work. You got it, bro. Mm -hmm. You done with you at? Yeah, I was done. Uh, then I, I'm done with Exodus too. We can move on. Okay. Um, so I was looking in the first Exodus, the first chapter with Josiah, but it says, and Josiah held the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Unto his Lord and offered the Passover the 14th day of the first month, having set the priests according to their daily courses, being arrayed in long garments, and the temple of the Lord. Are we in the temple of the Lord? No. Do we have the temple of the Lord? We represent the temple, of course. But even the thing with the long garments and, you know, all the righteous uh, segments, what, they had lamb without spot and blemish? We don't have lamb without spot and blemish. You know? 
scripture speak about how you shall eat um with Ezekiel. Your bread defiled. Your bread defiled among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. We're living amongst the Gentiles. And he spake unto the Levites, the holy ministers of Israel, that they should hollow themselves unto the Lord to set the holy ark. We don't have no ark of the Lord in the house that King Solomon, this son of David, had built. Yeah, so that was even a time where Solomon made peace. So even Jake had the provisions to actually keep a, a, a immaculate celebratory event, you know, to that magnitude. Here, it's like you spending all this money to hire these these certain Jakes to perform and all that bullshit if they're doing so. Because cause like Comfy's Passover, they have boys to men. They probably spent thousands of dollars on boys to men, you know. Singing shit that doesn't even relate to the Bible, bro. Like, what, what is you doing? Singing about women and baby this and baby that. The scriptures don't, during the Passover, that wasn't the uh, sentiment. You're not even supposed... I ain't gonna say that, man. I ain't gonna say that, man. So, it said, He shall no more bear the ark upon your shoulders. Now, therefore, serve the Lord your power and minister unto the people of Israel and pre prepare you after your families and kindreds. According as David the king of Israel prescribed, and according to the magnificence of Solomon his son, and standing in the temple according to the several dignity of the families of your Levite, of you the Levites who minister in the presence of your brethren, the children of Israel. Offer the Passover in order and make ready the sacrifices to your brethren, and keep the Passover according to the commandment of the Lord, which was given unto Moses. And unto the people that was found there, Josiah gave thirty thousand lambs and kids. We don't have any of that. You know, and three, and this this was fresh, holy in the land, produced by, you know, holy Israelites that was actually tilling the land and doing the rituals upon the land. So Jake had, you know, had a time to really give a lot to the Lord. And three thousand cows; these things were given of the king's allowance, according as he has promised to the people, to the priests, and to the Levites. And Hilkiah, Zacharias, and Silius, the governor of the temple, gave to the priests the for the past over 2,600 sheep and 100 cows. You know, it's a lot more in that. But the point, that's the point that I really wanted to make is, which I'll jump down to verse 20. And such a Passover was not kept in Israel since the time of the prophet Samuel. So, yeah, you had certain times where Israel was keeping, you know, very, very elegant Passover, so to speak. But mm -hmm. in the times that we're living in there, you know, we um, were not in that spirit. But, but if I can, if I can say, you use the word you said, Israel was keeping very elegant Passovers. This this does not look like an elegant Passover either. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is more like a party, a party. That's what this is because, I mean, it's not a solemn assembly. Even if it was an elegant Passover, it was still because the Lord didn't say He looked upon their Passover yeah. and 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 had disdain for it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't He didn't read that. Because they were still in the in the spirit of a solemn assembly, you know, it's just that Israel was doing really well at that time, so it was a nice, it was a good time to celebrate. Because uh, I believe uh, it goes on to say, that from the least to the greatest, mm -hmm. um, um, participated, and and nobody lacked, right? Mm -hmm. It said nobody lacked, right? As you um, continue. I think it was that in the book of Kings too? Probably in the uh, Chronicles Kings. because uh, I remember I remember reading some about how it said that uh, 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 during the uh, it said that no 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 one no, from the smallest from the greatest to the least nobody lacked nothing during that particular Passover, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, that was it. I got a precept. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I actually I wanted to bring up. For, let me go back to Exodus real quick because um, I wanted to read uh, where it says that this is a, a solemn assembly. To verse 16. Yeah. So it says, I'm going to skip down to verse 16. It says, And the first day thereof shall be a holy convocation, and the seventh day shall be a holy convocation unto you. So let's look up the word convocation because the, uh, uh, the word... Um, the word uh, holy, we know holy means to be set apart. So let's look up convocation and see what that means. Um, 
It says, uh, let's see what Esau says it is. Strong's H, 4744. Mikra. Mikra. All right, and it says, convocation, can, can voking, reading, a call together, convocation, sacred assembly. Okay, now let's look up that word sacred. Okay, because it says sacred assembly. Because we want to get, we want to understand what did the Lord mean by a holy convocation? Why is it, why did he use those words? It says connected with God. That's what it says. Connected with God or dedicated to a religious purpose and so deserving veneration, sacred rights. So this is, you think that you think, you think the Lord is looking down and saying, man, that's a great party you're having. The water for celebrating that. No. Okay? This is sacred. It's supposed to be connected. And see, you had all type. You had alcohol, you know, uh, wine. You had women up in there. You know what I'm saying? Dudes standing around with AR-15s. You had all the elements of Babylon in that place. It's like it, bro. You got it. Yeah, then you got, Jake, like you just said, Jake with guns. That's not the image that the Lord put out there for us to express ourselves in, man. You know? Now, did the ancient men in the ancient world actually have um, certain weapons to protect themselves? Yes, most definitely. You know? But to that capacity and the image that you're putting out, you're going to put yourself in a situation, Jake. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to happen. Because you, Jake's like to brag amongst the artillery that you carry. You know? Thinking it's something that's um, cool. You know? But see, that's how Esau is going. Because even like I did, um, Esau used the Sakari in the ancient world as pawn, you know? You know, but you had certain Jakes like uh, Judas Iscariot. You know, the Lord rebuked Judas with all uh, that sword. You know, he said, put down a sword for those that live by the sword shall die by the sword. Because at the end of the day, if you're using that gun or that weapon against any anybody outside of defense, then you're going to put yourself in a situation. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see that these Jakes, they got that, tr they got trigger happy demons on them, man. You know, so the littlest of situations, you know, same, same as, uh, like we were talking about earlier, it's probably a, a provocative uh, agent, but you probably believe you guys to be agents at, at the top at the, anyways. The same thing, this is not y'all, but it's a, another agent in the midst, and you got this deadly weapon. You can light your whole congregation up, man. But you guys won't listen and consider, you know, because what? Jake's thinking they know everything. They can't, they're, they're above correction. That's why the Lord, most I said, who mouths must be stopped. The Lord got to shut a lot of you niggas' mouths, man. You got the most to say about the apostles and elders, and you're doing everything wrong. Mm -hmm. You got it. Huh. Can you bring out another precept? Yeah. Give a few more of the folks. Huh. Um, so this next precept is Isaiah 30, and it's something that we bring up all the time, but this is exactly why, because we got to continue to beat it into y'all heads, man, because y'all don't get it, you know? But this is, a, the Lord is actually giving us an example of y'all and this precept right here. This is Isaiah 30, and I'm going to start at verse um, 9. It says, I'm going to start at verse 8. It says, now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, the scriptures, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Now, all right, later on in the future, that this is a rebellious people, lying children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You're rebellious. You see, the thing is, is that as me and the elder was talking earlier, Jake is gimmicky. Mm -hmm. Jake, you love those gimmicks because it brings comfort to what you're accustomed to. That's what it does. It makes you say, man, I'm, a, I'm accustomed to this. You know, you grew up with concerts and entertainment and watching things on TV and all that stuff. So, so it brings a level of comfort to you. So when you see a religious group out there that's, that's preaching a message that you have zeal for, but at the same time offering you some of those things that you're accustomed to in the world, it's like it's a win-win. You know what I'm saying? It's a win-win. I get to do this and do that, and I still get to serve the Lord. Oh, yeah. Half hood, half uh, holy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Damn, I never heard that. Half hood, half holy. That's what Jake had on the uh, shirt. What? Yeah, Jake had on the hoodie. Half hood, half holy. <sighs> Ain't no the, half and nothing. The one that had a gun. Dang, I didn't even peep that. If I'm not mistaken. But yeah, you can go to it in the clip if you want to. Yeah, that's but what yeah. I'm going to do. Like you just said, they're trying to merge both. The scriptures speak about you can only uh, drink. That's it. These guys out here. Half hood, half, hood, half holy. Yeah. Dang. 
Say you can only serve one Lord, so why you being half hood? Which hood is short for pretty much like a hoodlum, man. Or even if you say, okay, I'm from the hood. But that doesn't know. Because you might live in the suburbs now. You probably live in the suburbs. You've been probably living in the hood since you was from 1 to 15. All right, move out of the hood. You live in the suburbs, 16 to your 30s. You might be 35, 36. Majority of your, your life, you don't live in the suburbs. So are you suburban? Not necessarily. You lived in these different areas. That doesn't know if you be in hood or, or, or suburban. But that's just, Jake makes that like it's a, a, a something to, to characterize to make you tough. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm from the hood. I'm from this, I'm from that, you know. But really, even where we're from, that doesn't mean anything because you got brothers around you that's uh, from suburbs, mm -hmm. you know. But see, Jake is praising that, like you just said, putting that nigga, that nigga image out. You know, I'm from the ghetto. That's what niggas say, man, you know. Now, let's speak about how you have a shot. His location, you know, where he was from, it's in Nazareth. Mm -hmm. But, um, talk about, but thou Bethlehem, you know, but it was really just getting into a, the point of, um, where he's from, but you didn't say, see it from a, praising to be from a low area, which neither wasn't necessarily low, it just was a, it was low in comparison to Israel, but it wasn't necessarily the, what you could call the hood, but the praise that the Lord wasn't saying I'm hood, mm -hmm. you know, that's not our culture, man, that's not the image of the Lord. Told us to put on, like I said, the same Jake, this big ass gun, man, looking like he ready. And you already know he's he already got the joint loaded, man, ready yeah. to let, let off. I'm trying to look all, uh, what's the word, stoic, you know, like I'm just here to secure, to secure the premises. Yeah, well, some damn, uh, like he killed the shit up just on his shoulders. Jake, Jake is just gimmicky, man. It's all a gimmick. It's all a gimmick, yeah. You know, see, we see through the bullshit. You people see that and get. He wished, like, oh shit, you know. It's high level. <laughs> Spirit with you. You know, but they, they look at they look at us and and and, and they like, oh, they them some bums. Yeah. You know? And I'm gonna get that definition of gimmick. The definition, I'm gonna hit the point, the etymology, it is a piece of magician's apparatus. Yeah, so I get an apparatus. But the point that I wanted to make was the magic of it. Yeah, the typical the technical equipment or machinery you need for a particular activity. Yeah, so they use the scriptures, but they use the scriptures, like the scripture says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You know? Because if you believe in the most high, you already know you don't need to actually that big ass gun on you anyways, man. If Esau come out, the scripture says that the Lord did deliver you into the magistrate. Even if Esau come and raise your, your facility, you don't, you can't up no gun on them. Because now you're going to get locked up for murder. You know? And why would niggas just run through there and just start taking you out? Unless there's a level of paranoia and nigga shit you involved. Because we don't believe that. When we do the bad we're like, yeah, niggas might run into the crib. You know, hey, brother, biggest gun you got, bring, get a shotgun and just post it by the door. Bro, we just teaching the word, bro. You know, we don't have that level of paranoia. And if the Lord does something, then it's like, so be it. Because... Scriptures speak about how the Lord encampeth around them, about them that fear, you know? And we just leave everything in the Lord's hands. So why would the Lord deliver such a menacing nigga through y'all's facility, for, you know what I'm saying, for you to have to shoot him down and such in the midst of the Passover? Jake, is simple, man. And if I can say, too, just real quick, it's the Passover. You're, 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 you're sending up supplications to the Lord so that evil will pass over you. So, while if evil is gonna pass over you, why would you need a weapon? Why would you need a weapon? Why would you need a weapon? Like that was the whole point of it, is so that the destroyer will pass over you. Blood being sprinkled upon your doorpost was enough, bro. And, and that was the point of the blood being sprinkled, mm -hmm. so you don't have to have the big boy guns, you know. And 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 even though we're not putting blood, physical blood, on our doorpost, right? We're doing we're by by us doing this. In doing it correctly to the best of our ability, we're putting spiritual blood on our doorpost, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole point of it. We're supposed to be rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability, as it says in the book of Judges, man. We rehearse the righteous acts. 
this is not how the Passover is set up. We just read it. Even when Yahweh Shai sat down with the apostles and, and he went and, and he went to, he said, this, this, is, this is my blood that was spilled for you. This is my, my flesh that was broken for you, right? Even when, 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 when Yahweh Shai went through all that, what were they doing? Were they partying? They wasn't partying, man. I mean, I mean, I know, I know this is it, it, Edomite last supper, you know, and then, you know, but just for reference purposes, when you look at the images of Esau's version of the Last Supper, do you see them partying? They all sitting at a table, you know. Now we know that's not the correct image of Yahweh Shai and the disciples, but I'm just using that as for reference purposes. You see what I'm saying? So you can understand, like, no, it wasn't a party, man. Mm -hmm. You know. But uh, I, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say I wanna change that that scripture, but I got you got it. You, you got a scripture on the thing? Yeah, it was uh, I was I still was reading in um Isaiah thirty. Mm -hmm. Okay, come. On. Uh, it says Isaiah thirty and ten, and it says, Which say to the seers, I'm sorry, a verse of verse nine it says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, which not which will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and say to the prophets, prophesy unto us right things. Not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy the seeds. These are these gimmicks. The, the gimmicks. That's why it says, Oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? You know? Because you guys got that spirit of the Galatians, man, being easily bewitched, man. Mm. Now, was the Galatians all wicked? No. But there were certain things they had to clean up. But the majority of you guys, to be honest, you guys, are, you named your, your, your group as such, the Sakar, you know, gun toting, um, Grimaces, you know, to the to the civilization, you know, and see Jake. They see that this truth is like a drug; they get more and more and more. So you guys are gonna get gimmick here. If not, your congregation is gonna, you know, veer away. You're gonna do more and more things to lead Jake into captivity to the point you're gonna put yourself in a situation, man. You know, because Jake is trying to make a name for himself, like like all with Jake. You had a man in, in, in time of Maccabees he say he wanted to make a name for himself. Stabbed that elephant uh, up under and it fell upon him. But um, you had anything else? Uh, well, no, that was, that, that was that's it. I'll close with this one. Okay. This is Acts 20 and 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Verse 31, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Yeah, so Paul spoke of examples of men that's going to come in and, and just devour the congregation, man. The uh, which congregation that represents the sheep, ones that kind of are docile. The majority of our people have extremely low IQ. That's, that's a fact. You know, Jake Reed said a damn second grade level. You know, Jake be down to 35, 40, still reading like they in fucking um, third grade, man. Struggling to get through big words. So when they see certain things with that low IQ, you know, no disrespect, but just, it's just, it's, it's a fact. A lot of our people don't have the faculties to put two and two together. They get bedazzled by it, you know, and then they see that you actually know the scriptures and know certain things of the Bible and, you know, they trust you. You know, because they're like, why would a man that believes, you know, comes so adamantly about the Bible still be wrong? Not knowing that these guys have hidden agendas, man, high-level warlocks. Why do you think uh, there is a such thing as a warlock? Somebody that actually knows how to, you know, cast spells. But Jake doesn't know. And that's why the Lord said that uh, when, you, when the Lord pretty much runs down on you guys in the spirit, you're going to be beaten with many stripes. Because the Lord really just got to clean, clean up house, man. That's, That's why it. Passover is hey, spring clean. Yep. No, I mean, yeah, that's that. Hey, the brother, and the scriptures talk about how uh, judgment shall begin with the house of Israel, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so the Lord, he, hey, the, it's, it's about to come, man. And, and, and thing, and I know we keep saying it because, uh, you know, a lot of y'all will hear us and y'all say, well, y'all good saying that. Listen, when it happens, it's going to happen. And when it happens, a lot of y'all will get shipped the hell up. And then y'all gonna realize y'all been lied to. You know what I'm saying? Why these people that y'all was getting to feel another, y'all went from one Christian feel good message to another Christian feel good mm -hmm. message. You know? 
not really putting together that all these groups are five hundred one c three, and they cannot teach. They can't even, according to their five hundred one c three charter, they can't even teach you the correct doctrine. They can't even teach you what we teach. Mm -hmm. You got it. I, I guess that's all I have. But yeah, you know, we just wanted to go into that in the spirit, you know, to um, really push that spirit of how the Passover should be conducted. And we always speak about these things, you know. Keep it simple, Jake. You know, all that extra shit that can, that can get you in, um, in trouble, you know, in the spirit. But with that, you know, we're going to end it by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bah Shem, Yahweh Shai, Bah Shem, Rakakadash. Bill Wallace is the Apostle of the Great Millstone. Shalom, Mark. Shalom.